Hello my friends, welcome back to Ink and Fig. My name is Alex and today I am bringing you another update on the Aurelium Readathon. It is the middle of the third week of August? That sounds right. I had two weeks of August as vacation and I am in the middle of the week after that, so we're in the middle of the third week of August. It is officially halfway through the month. It is the 15th today as of time of filming. I don't know when this is going to get up, but it's the 15th as of time of filming. So I'm halfway through. We're getting there. I actually have a lot of progress to share with you and I'm super excited about it. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, as you know from my last video, I was reading Bear Town by Friedrich Backman. I finished it. This <laughs> was really heavy. Um, so the trigger warnings on this one for sexual assault are extremely heavy. Um, and like the fallout after that whole event is so well put together. Like everybody's feelings were very real, whether they were helpful feelings or unhelpful feelings, helpful views on the matter or unhelpful views on the matter. You know, you probably know what I'm talking about. But it was beautifully put together. I got so angry at how people were handling this situation because it felt so real and so close to what happens in real life that I genuinely got angry at the characters in this book and I had to put the book down for a day to process my emotions and to work on something else, something a little bit lighter, so that I could come back to this and finish it with a clear head. So that's what I did and I did finish it. I loved, loved, loved this book. This was absolutely five stars trigger warnings and content warnings taken into account, still five stars. And I have somewhere else on my shelf, Us Against You, which is the follow up to this, which is going to include some other stuff that I'm very excited about. The book ended up being a lot about how a village can make a child and raise a child and the role of for lack of a better phrase, the role of bullying in society and how that becomes the culture because everybody's always done it and so everybody learns to do it or learns to accept being the brunt of it and then when someone does something really bad but they are an important person in your community, do you defend them? Or do you side against them, even though they've done something really horrible? And how is your culture, the culture of the, the, the community, in this case a sports community, and a literal small town, how is that going to affect the community? How is it going to tear it apart or bring it together? or both of those things. How's it going to reshape the environment in an event like this? And this book really goes into some very good depth about that while questioning other important things about life. Like I thought that this was just such a great capturing of a point in time in a small community. We questioned a lot of things in here, made a lot of really interesting insights about life in general and about the subject matter that we were dealing with. And everything was given due respect, which I really appreciate, particularly because we're dealing with uh, a male author writing about a sexual assault of a teenage girl. I think he handled it masterfully, and I'm really pleased with what he did with this book. So if you're thinking about reading something that's a little bit heavier and you're okay with these content warnings, I definitely would recommend Bear Town. This was immaculately written. Fabulous. So that one... I think was for my restoration prompt, if I'm not mistaken. If I am mistaken, I'll pop it up somewhere on the screen to point out what I'm incorrect about. So that one was really good. Uh, for my Conjuration D level course, I have so far skipped Q, but Q is coming eventually. I read Unlocking by Amy LeBlanc. Now this one is my indie published pick. I'm sort of stretching it a little bit because this was published by the University of Calgary Press, which I would consider an indie publisher. That's just how I'm choosing to interpret the prompt. If you're not interpreting the prompt that way, that's cool. You do you, I'm gonna do me, and that's how we're doing. So this one was super short. I finished it in an afternoon. 
it was so good. <laughs> so this is about a woman who has been secretly making copies of all of her neighbors' keys as they come into her hardware store to get their keys for their homes recut. So she takes herself a copy that they don't know about and sticks it in a little connection or a, a little collection on a carabiner in her private stuff and just collects them. She never plans on really doing anything with them until one of the old ladies in her town decides to blackmail her into breaking into people's houses. So that gets interesting. So we have sort of a breaking and entering scheme. We have some really cool characters. I thought all the characters were really well developed in this. The old lady, her name is Euphemia. Fabulous name, first and foremost. She is giving... Elizabeth from the Thursday Murder Club, one of my favorite mysteries of all time. She's really giving Elizabeth, but like she doesn't have that same history. She just kind of has that attitude. And I absolutely love her. Like I would die for you, Femia, and you can't convince me otherwise. She's great. Our main character, Lou, is going through some things and she does some growing while she becomes like a professional breaking and entering artist. There is a really interesting interlude with a Thanksgiving dinner that kind of reads like Polly Anderson's Christmas Party, if you're familiar with Stuart McLean's work. I thought that was genius. <laughs> it was so much fun. I probably will end up reading this at some point again, because this was just a really fun story and it was super short. So yeah, Unlocking, you can get this on, at the very least, Amazon, if not other book retailers online if you're looking for it. Um, if you're not in Calgary, I wouldn't be surprised if you couldn't find this in person, um, but definitely give this a look online. It's only 109 pages and it's a lot of fun. Uh, so once I finished those two, I realized that I was kind of starting to get a little bit lean on content. So I realized that it was time for me to pick my Instagram picks. So I thought we could pick that together. Hello, what I'm doing right now is I am picking my Instagram read which is for demonology. My demonology O-level, I have to read the first book that pops up on my Instagram. So we are going to do that together. I'm starting the screen recording now, and uh, we're going to figure out what I'm reading. Starting off strong. No books up there. Got some ads. That's my best friend. Um... So this is my Inking Fig Reads account, and as you can probably tell, I'm really here for the vibes. And that's great. Oh, no. Okay. I guess I'm reading a picture of Dorian Gray. I love that for me. Um, there is... One viewer, one of my other best friends, uh, who is going to be extremely happy about this. I don't know how I feel. Um, now, fascinatingly, I actually have two options for this. I have both the English and the German editions, um, because one of my German friends from a couple of jobs ago that I had um, gave that to me. So I can choose. Um, I think I'm going to go with the English version because that sounds a little bit easier to do in the context of how many books I have to read this month. Because I'm starting to run out of time, as I'm sure you can tell, if, especially if you are also part of the readathon, you can tell that we are running out of time and I gotta get going. So I'm gonna read the English version and wish me luck. As you can see, I'm reading the picture of Dorian Gray, um, this had a dust jacket at one point in time, but I decided I didn't like the dust jacket and I liked the the vibes of the naked book a little bit better. So this is what I've got. I am currently, I think, just at the halfway point. Um, I'm two pages shy of the halfway point. This is my first read through of this. I typically avoid classics because I find them lofty and not necessarily as helpful as the literary community would have us think. I am saying that as a person with an English literature degree. So I did study classics in university. Um, they are definitely interesting case studies and there are some that are genuinely very good, 
but on the whole I don't think classics are all they're necessarily cracked up to be. Save that they're kind of source text for a lot of things, taking particular consideration for Chloe Gong's work, which is largely based off of Shakespeare. So there's definitely a place for it. It's just, in my opinion, they're not all they're cracked up to be. Um, this one, however, is extremely readable. And they're this. So if you're not familiar with Oscar Wilde, he was gay as hell. And he was absolutely persecuted for it. He was imprisoned and forced to do hard labor for two years uh, following his conviction for being what at the time was called a sodomite. If you don't know what that is, look it up. So he, uh, he, he, he definitely went through it. He got to keep his life, which is more than a lot of people at that point in time. And even today get to do in certain parts of the world, it's still punishable by death to be queer, it, either gender queer or... Um, gay in any sense of the term so he got to do that but he still went through the ringer because life for queer folks sucked on the whole for until quite recently and even now it still kind of sucks uh depending on who you are and where you are so anyway this is the gayest piece of literature i have ever read dorian gray is the biggest twink of all time henry is a fucking time and like I don't even know what's going on with like the painter in this Basil Hallward the painter the second biggest twink in the book um like the I don't know there's some sort of like weird kind of love triangle not love triangle thing going on with Henry Basil and Dorian and it's weird and then Dorian is off in his own world just like falling in love with whatever he feels like um we've already got someone who's died like it's it's weird this is wild but it's fun and it's very very readable which coming from me I think means something so I'm enjoying it so far I'm enjoying it more than I thought and I am glad that I chose to read it in English because I think that the reading level of this book, even for me, is like kind of pushing some of my upper limits. Um, and I don't think that there's any way in hell that I'm even remotely close to that in German. So this was the move. However, I would now like to go ahead and read the German one at some point to hopefully improve my German skills. So I've got that going for me. Now, because all of this wasn't enough, and because of some other extenuating circumstances that I'm about to explain, I ended up also doing the apothecary extra experience opportunity situation. The prompts for this is to read two books with plants on the cover and take five photos of flowers and post them somewhere online. So I did post those photos already on the Discord, but you can see my flower photos here. They're beautiful. The reason that I decided to do this was because I needed some extra incentive to finish Ander and Santi were here. I no longer have the book in my possession because it was a library book and I had to give it back. Um, and it was horrifically overdue by like a long shot. So that was why I needed to finish it. So I decided, all right, I'm in the middle of the book. If I finish the book, I'm gonna let it count for this prompt. Cause like, it's not hurting anybody if I do it that way. So I'm just going to do it that way because I really needed to finish that book. And I did finish it. And honestly, the end was heartbreaking and really, really good. It was sad and it was beautiful and I cried a little bit. And it all just came out beautifully. I think my take about it being a little bit on the thirsty side for me being someone who's over 10 years older than the characters still stands. I still felt a little bit weird reading it from my point of view as a 30 year old and these two characters are 19. That was a little bit weird to me but if you're closer in age to the characters I think that it would probably vibe with you a little bit better um, and it wouldn't have that sort of weird context thing going on for you. So definitely would give that a read. Um, and even if you're just okay with that and I'm just being weird about it, definitely give it a read anyway. It was great. The second book that I read for the apothecary situation was the first volume of Flying Witch. I'm not sure what I think about this. It's 
extremely slice of life. Like really nothing happened in this book. There wasn't a whole lot of plot. There was a premise in that our main character here, Makoto, is a witch and she has moved in with her cousin and her baby cousin and she is sort of going off on her first couple of years of being a full-grown witch, being 15 years old and out on her own. So she's finishing high school in this remote town in the north of Japan with her cousin and doing witch stuff. And this is her cat, who is very cute. And um, yeah, that's kind of it. S uh, we get little vignettes of moments from her life, but there was really no overarching plot. Um, and honestly, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to keep going with this because I do like things with a little bit more of a plot. But it was nice. It was soft and I didn't have to put too much brain power into it, which I also really liked because I don't have a lot of brain power to give these days. And what brain power I do have is going into Dorian Gray at the moment. So yeah, Flying Witch. Good stuff. So with that, I have finished the Apothecary opportunity apothecary keeper apothecary thing i'm good on that i have that going for me um so that leaves me at the halfway point of dorian gray so i have to finish that i still have the only good indians to finish i have that secret read that i am doing for the culture that is not my own to finish um and then i still need to get over to my friend's house to have their cat aurora pick me out one last book from the books that we set aside in my last video. And then once I finish all of that, we're officially done. And that's gonna be really great. And I'm looking forward to that. So stay tuned for that because in the next video, there is going to be a cat. So on that note, if you have not subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe so that you do not miss A, the cat and B, whatever other shenanigans we have going on around here because we have plenty. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you are reading right now. Even if you're not doing the readathon, I'd love to hear about what you're reading because I am going to need some suggestions for once this is all over. Go ahead and like this video if you liked it so that other people can come and join the fun and see what we're up to over here. And go ahead and follow me on all of my social media at Ink and Fig. Uh, I'm on threads right now and I am reasonably active over there. Um, so if you're over there, go hit me up. And uh, I think that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you being here and I will see you in the next one. Bye.